It's crazy figuring out how to go live from to Facebook from Zoom. Let's just cross our fingers it's going to work. I didn't know you could do that. I'm going to have to look into that. That's cool. I know. Okay. Okay. Hey, do you like my shirt? I think we're live. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's a great way to intro into this health challenge with Tim's love when you poop shirt. Yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, um, so... Uh, those of you turning in, hey, welcome to the Vibrant You Health Challenge launch meeting. And we're so excited to have you here. We're just excited about um, the opportunity to get healthy together. And um, just thanks for joining us. I'm going to, looks like we just had Nicole join us again. I'm going to get her loaded up here. Hey, Nicole. And we'll even let her talk. We'll even yeah. unmute her. Hey, Nicole. Okay, I'm back up. Sorry about that. No worries. Hey, you got, you got frozen earlier, but you were looking really good when you were frozen. You're at least smiling. <laughs> yeah, you had a really good frozen shot. It was like perfect. Awesome. <laughs> I should have screenshotted it and sent it to you. I thought about it. <laughs> so, um, again, um, welcome everybody to the Vibrant You Health Challenge launch meeting. I got Lisa, Tim, and Nicole. I'm gonna we're gonna introduce them here in a few minutes. And thank you guys so much for being here with us. Um, I don't know if it's the same screen where you're looking at, but top left is Lisa, bottom left is Tim, and Nicole's the bottom right. And I'm Blake with Nature's Pantry, and and we'll do a little more introductions here. Um, again, welcome to the Vibrant You Health Challenge launch meeting. And what is this all about? This isn't about weight. This isn't about a quick fix. This is, let's see, I got a, I'm probably getting a bunch of texts from people. It's about a lifestyle, people. Let's just make <laughs> sure, let's make sure we're live here. I'll just fill in why Blake's looking stuff up. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Nicole, do you have the live up, stream up, or? Let's see. I gotta minimize this. Oh yeah, we're rolling. Cool. Yeah. Should be. Oh, Lisa, I think I had her muted. Now Lisa's not muted anymore. There we go. There we go. Cool. Okay, Jess says we're good. All righty. Cool. Nicole, you're, I can't see you very good. Can you tilt your screen down a little? Yeah, I'm trying to get my video to come okay, back. Cool. So yeah, very no worries. I'll just go ahead and do a little intro here and then we'll talk with each of you a little bit. So, you know, this isn't this isn't a fad diet. This isn't a quick fix. You know, today, today it seems like what we want is we want a pill that's going to fix our problem for us. We want something that's going to, you know, to tell us what we want to hear. Um, you know, at least in my experience, the truth is there is no such thing. There is lifestyle choices. There's lifestyle habits. There's things we can do that all add up to where we're at health wise, where we're at fitness wise. And changing that isn't really always easy at first. Um, but over time, as we develop these fundamental habits, that's when, um, that's when, you know, you start to notice it, it becomes automatic. You don't even have to try. Um, and so that's what, that's what this is about. Um, I'm going to talk a little more about that, but I really want to use this time to get to know our health pros today. Let's, um, Tim, let's start with you. Um, Ladies first. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> hey, um, so tell me, tell me what, um, tell me about yourself. Tell me what you do. Well, um, I'm originally from La Grande, Oregon, born and raised. And, um, I ended up uh, on the standard American diet my whole life, um, 40 pounds overweight, had a bunch of skin issues, gut issues, um, things weren't working out well for me. I ended up in the hospital getting a surgery. I, I actually had blood coming out in my stools when I go to the bathroom. And after that surgery, I realized that I was kind of a mess and I didn't really understand health, even though I thought I did because I'd read some books on it and I was eating lots of protein and doing all these things. And um, I went to a, a place in Florida it was a detox and nutrition center with my buddy that got cancer. And I learned all about detox and nutrition. 
changed my whole life, changed my lifestyle. And a lot of the stuff like on this challenge that you're having the participants do, it's just my lifestyle now. So when you sent the challenge, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be awesome because I'm already doing most of it. So it's going to be easy. And that's what you were alluding to is it, it gets easier the more you do it and you add these things into your life. So now what I do is um, I, I got out of the financial services industry and I coach people for a living on their health. And we also have our own detox and nutrition products that have no toxins or chemicals in them, which is like finding a needle in the haystack in the supplement industry. I know you guys at Nature's Pantry carry my line, which is really cool. So I appreciate that. We love it. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm here to support the group um, um, and, and encourage people. You know, what I've noticed is like, there's two camps of people. There's the people that you're either enlightened or you're frightened when it comes to health. So the enlightened people kind of like say, you know what, I'm going to get ahead of this. I'm going to take responsibility for my health. I'm going to start making some changes. I want to get healthy. I want to build my immune system. I want to live a long time. I want to look good. I want to feel good. And I don't want to be in pain. And those people are more common today. When I started this work 10 years ago, it was kind of rare. Most of the people like me was out of frightened. I was doing this out of fear because, you know, I just had organs removed and I was like falling apart and I just, I felt terrible. And that's where most people are in America today. We have our heads buried in the sand and we're so caught up in our daily lives that we put everything else, we put ourselves last. We put everything else first. We put ourselves last until a wheel falls off with our health. And then all of a sudden we're in having to get surgery. We're on medications or taking chemo or whatever, radiation, doing all these crazy things to our bodies. Why, why would we wait for that? So what I'm hoping that the people in this group are doing is maybe not doing it out of fear, but doing it because they want to do it because they want to be healthy and be a leader, not only for themselves and, and take back their own self, you know, um, loving themselves, but also to be an inspiration for their friends and their family around them to give them permission to change themselves. That's what it's all about. So when the people listening today, when you start changing yourself, you're literally giving the most important people in your lives permission to do them because they're to change themselves. They're going to be watching you and they might give you a bunch of crap in the beginning, like a lot of my Legrand friends did. Um, but now guess what? They all call me when they have health issues or their children have health issues. And I'm more than happy and willing to help them because I stuck to it because I loved myself and I didn't care what anybody else said. I just knew that I loved myself and I was going to figure it out. And so what I did was, is I went and copied other people that had health issues and then got success. And more importantly, were able to maintain a healthy lifestyle and a healthy body for years, for years and years afterwards. Cause that's what it's at. It's not a quick fix. It's a lifestyle. So that's what I'm here. I'm here to support you guys. Um, I'm also going to give away um, free coaching sessions to anybody that would like to get a coaching session with me in this group at any time during the challenge, you get one free session. Um, and you can book that at chemicalfreebody.com under the coaching tab. Just get a free session there. And, um, um, and I just really want to encourage everybody to really plug into the group and participate and share and don't feel isolated. We're here for you. Uh, Lace is here for you. Nicole's here for you. Blake's here for you. And the other people in the group are here for you. So let's just do this together and make a lot, make it, make it fun. And, and, and let's see how, how good, how far we can come and, and, you know, maybe people can be feeling really good at the end of this challenge and they can keep it going. Oh, thank you, Tim, so much. I really appreciate what you had to say there. I think um, you really hit home with me with a lot of things that I relate to as well. I'm sure some with Lisa and Nicole and with our audience. Tim, what's your um, what's your number one goal yourself during this challenge? And what's your number one tip to the to challengers? Uh, my number one goal for this challenge is to, you know, well, you laid out the guidelines pretty, pretty much in detail, right? Yeah. Which was nice. So uh, everybody get that chart out and print it off. Um, I have to get some more ink right now. So I wasn't able to print it because my printer, I have to go to the printer place tomorrow and get some more ink. But um, I looked it over really good. And it's nice because you have a checklist, which makes everything easy. But my main goal is just to, um, you know, I, I looked it over. Honestly, I pretty much my lifestyle is the checklist. So it's, it's going to be very easy for me. I mean, it's like, it's not even really that much of a challenge. I know I'm just being honest. This is the way it is. Like I'm actually on a 40 day fast right now. I'm just, I'm on day like 22. I've just been drinking my greens and water and stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's going to be simple. 
but so what I'm here, my, my number one goal is just to really support and empower the group and ask, ask, answer questions and help the people in the group. I'm here for you guys. That's what I'm here for. And I guess my biggest tip for you guys would be again, to plug in and then just take baby steps. Don't, if, if you hear all these things, you hear stuff from me and Nicole says some stuff and Blake says some stuff and Lacey says some stuff, just pick out like some, something that resonates with you and make that a habit and get that down and then go to the next thing and slowly over time, baby step, baby step, layer in, layer in. I call them just keep stacking the cards in the deck of health. And before too long, you stack all these things up and your immune system is going to go up and boom, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to feel good. And you're yeah. going to be like, wow, how'd I get here? It's because yeah. you put in the effort, you, you know, what you put out is what you get back. It's just pure physics. So anyway, yeah. that's, that would be my tip. Oh yeah. That, that's funny um, that you say that too, because it, um, I, early on when I was working at nature's pantry, I did a couple classes with you and you know, it was like, man, like this guy is so out there and I am so not even near that yet. Um, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then slowly over time, you know, I, I really appreciated a lot of what you said, but it was like, wow, you're way. And like, even like a year or two after some of the things you taught, I started to actually do them. So yeah. even though it took that long for me to actually get to that point. Um, and then also, I think Lisa in one of our last classes, she said the same thing. There was something you had told her that she started doing. Yeah. Well, girls are a lot smarter and faster on the uptake than guys. So, so. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tim. <laughs> no, but, and again, like, yeah, I thought like when I went to Hippocrates, this guy was on a 10 day fast and I'm like, what do you mean 10 day fast? He wasn't eating food. I'm like, this guy's insane. He's crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, so don't compare yourself to me. I'm 10 years into this. I completely geek out on health and um, it's just start where you're at and do not compare yourself to anybody. It's your journey that perfect version of you is already happened. All you have to do is reveal it to the universe with your actions and it will show up. And I was just talking to Lisa. I've watched Lisa over the last couple of years in her Instagram post, completely transforming herself and now becoming this, like this health guru. And that's so cool. And she's, who did that? She did. And everybody on this group can do the same thing at yeah. whatever level they want. Don't compare yourself to me or Lisa or anybody. Just do your own deal. Yeah, thank you so much, Tim. Appreciate that. That's a good transition to, into Lisa. Lisa, do you want to tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Well, I also grew up in Eastern Oregon and actually grew up around Tim. Um, we had quite the stories that date back. I won't mention too many of those. <laughs> um, but we had a good time together growing up. So it's kind of cool to see us together on a similar platform and, and um, with similar goals. But uh, you know, I have always, always, always been interested in the human body, fascinated by it, um, really always interested in wellness, um, but didn't maybe understand all of what that meant or all of what that was. And I think much like Tim, I think we talk, I mean, there's just layers and layers of time and information and history and learning that have gone on to kind of get you where you are. Mm -hmm. um, in the most recent time, you know, I've I worked around athletics a long time, 17 years, um, played sports when I was growing up. And I was always fascinated just on what we could accomplish from everything from performance and, and that side of things. And I think what I realized is, as I became a personal trainer eight years ago, I, the nutritional aspect of it was so profound in healing the body and in wellness, how we feel, how we interact. Um, it, how it affects our emotions and our hormones and how we respond to other people, how we cope. Um, and then just the physical aspect of it. And so I've been enthralled with it since realizing how imperative it was to obviously overall health. And so um, for me, it's, it's fun just as much as it is work. I enjoy it so much. And I'm, I'm just, it, to learn about it and to introduce new things is, um, I just thrive on it. But anyway, um, I guess I thought it'd be fun to share a few little things about me. Uh, I think everybody knows probably that follows me at all that I love being outside, I love the outdoors, I like physical things, but I don't just love those physical things. I love them because they're hard. I love them because they're challenging. I love them because when I'm outside, I smell things like 
the sun on the pine trees and you can smell the oil and it's toasting. I love the smell of leather, but I like it on a horse's saddle when you're out and you can, I mean, I, there's so many things like that. There's reasons that I want to encourage everybody when they're doing this challenge. And I know, I hate to say it, but this world pandemic is providing you with more opportunity than you can possibly imagine to step back away from all the worldly things and all the pressures and really hone in on what's important and focus on those little things that you are grateful for and that you appreciate and notice about yourself what you like and and pull those things into your goals um more than anything i was thinking think about how much time well some of us have more time to be at home and not bombarded by any influences outside so much so there's less eating out there's less going to the grocery store at least for me i'm i am um, using some different tools and different methods to do a lot of my shopping most of the time um so that i'm not influenced by what's what what you walk down the aisle and see all the time and bo are bombarded with but anyway i guess to to go through a few of the things that you wanted us to blake I wanted to just tell them, focus on the opportunity in the challenge that we're currently in, not just this wellness challenge, but what's going on all around us and realize that it is an opportunity. Have your eyes wide open that you might have more time at home at the table with your family to have influence over not just your health and your wellness and nutrition, but also your family. You might have a little bit more time to focus on cooking and how you're gonna cook and enjoying the process of cooking through putting those herbs in and smelling them and tasting them and actually kind of just connecting to the world around you a little bit more. Um, I think right now, um, obviously I shop at nature's pantry, but Me too. I, but I also, I mean, I do shop at other places in town and nature's pantry allows some grocery pickup for those that need it. Walmart also is doing that. I know we don't like to promote Walmart all that much, but I'm honestly, for those of you who are find it difficult to be um, in the store and not pick up things and not be tempted to put things in your cart that you shouldn't, that you're going to end up with at home that you're not happy with, this is an opportunity for you to shop online or to call Blake at Nature's Pantry and have them put the goods in and have them ready for you to go and you stop, they pick it up, they put it in your vehicle and you move on with life. So you're learning how to navigate your systems better so that the temptations around you, you can eliminate. Um, and for a lot of people, it's learning, it's not necessarily removing the temptation altogether, but taking baby steps towards um, helping do that a little bit at a time until you get used to it. Um, Tim said something that I think is so important. We mentioned it in the last challenge, but I think this is critical, you guys. You're going to see all these different things and you're going to go, well, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this and I need to change. And you're going to see this list of things when you fill when you look at the um, challenge sheet of all the things that you need to change or want to change. And my suggestion to you is that you write down a list of your top three, and then you look at the top three and you focus on one and you pick the one that's going to move the needle the farthest towards your end goal. So if you have like one big end goal, figure out what that is and pick the one thing on that list to focus on first and foremost, that's going to move the needle the most in four weeks. And then, like Tim also said this, other things are going to follow. Other things are going to fall into place. They're going to kind of naturally um, move with that, but pick one so that you don't get overwhelmed at least the first week. Um, I'm here because I love helping people, I guess. I want to help people be well, and I want to educate people about being well. And if there's anything that is in my brain that I could give to you so that it's in your toolkit too. Um, I want to be able to share that with you. So ask questions, um, put some questions in the uh, Facebook vibrant you challenge feed or whatever, ask those questions of the health pros so that we can give you some responses. Um, 
I know right now my uh, career job is keeping me pretty hopping with everything that's going on. It's pumped up work for me. So I'm not going to tell you that I can respond in an immediate sense, but I will always get back to you. I promise. Um, but I want to be able to be there as your support. Specifically, I feel like my area of expertise is more around um, holistic nutrition and, and health and fitness that way. Um, but um, send the questions and shoot. We'll, we'll see if we can't give you answers or get you directed in the right place. Uh, I was just thinking, Blake, what have I missed? Um, what will I be giving them? Um, Mountain Valley has some prizes. What's that? Mountain Valley did already? Yeah. Okay. For me, my personal uh, goal with this, there were two things on there. One that was going to be worth points for, uh, for us personally, and then also one that was going to be negative points. Um, right now, I'm, I'm actually really, really busy with work. We're, we're getting some pretty cool things accomplished that we wouldn't normally during these crazy times. So that's exciting, but it's also, um, I'm working from home and I am sitting in my chair a lot and it's mentally taxing. And so for me personally, I am going to really make sure I take a break 30 minutes every single day to just kind of step back away from everything else and dream, um, calm down, meditate, pray, whatever you want to call it about the things that I know I'm supposed to be doing, the things that I enjoy, the things that make me feel good inside. And I'm just going to take that time 30 minutes every day. And then five minutes of daily devotion type uh, thing. My negative for the minus eight points, Blake, you pumped it up like crazy. I was like, what? Um, I, like often a lot of the work that I do is with social media with my clients. So it's hard. Sometimes I end up finding myself on social media platforms like late and I have to stop doing that. So I've given myself a cutoff. So I'm not allowed to have any screen time or be on social media platforms um, after eight o'clock at night. And so that's my no, no. That's a good um, one. Yeah. And I don't, did I cover everything? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nicole. Yeah. I want to hand the baton to you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You guys all had wonderful things to say. I love it. And, you know, I think all of us are a lot alike and that's why we're doing this challenge. Um, like Tim said, I already pretty much practice most of the things on the list daily. Um, I went to the Institute of integrative nutrition health coaching school cool. and there they um are very much about uh primary food and secondary food and primary food is what we're doing in our daily life like our career our spiritual life our activities social life home cooking education you know those types of things and you know all of that as a whole can make a balanced life but let's face it in the world we were all living in, nobody could find a balance because everybody was like, I'm too busy. I have too many appointments and rushing around. And I myself was one of those people, you know, I'm a health coach and I found myself getting overwhelmed. And really it was when my dad passed away in October that things kind of turned upside down for me. It was a lot of stress. Um, I watched him go through hospice and um, he was an alcoholic. And he was um, heart failure, liver failure, kidney failure because of it. And it was hard for me because I couldn't help him. And he was my dad and I'm a health coach, you know, but it made me realize we all have our own journeys and we all have to choose for ourselves. And I couldn't beat myself up for that. But that's why it also made me find my passion again, because that's why I want to help people because I want to prevent what happened to my dad and what I saw him go through. And I literally watched him die for two, three months and over the summer. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I wouldn't want anyone to have to go through that. And I'm here because it's so important to me that people just make these little daily changes because that can really save you a lot in the long run. Um, and, you know, 
although it still is, I think I'm still recovering from what I witnessed with my dad, but it gets better every day. And I really do get comfort knowing that he's not suffering anymore in his life because he was an alcoholic. So he chose to numb his emotions, if you will. Um, but also that he's just not suffering with his disease or he's not in pain. And I really believe, you know, I'll see him again. But that's why it's so important, guys. Like Tim was saying earlier, we wait until it's the last minute and we have to have surgery or the doctor tells us, you know, if you don't change, then you could die or whatever it may be that scares us into changing. But don't wait until it's too late. I guess that's my biggest advice is don't wait until it's too late. Just implement one little thing if you can, and over time, the rest will follow through. Amen. And also, Preach, it, sister. Preach it, sister. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Amen. And uh, my actual number one goal for this challenge is to quit eating cheese. Because I'm mostly on a vegan diet, but I love cheese, you guys. I have a problem. <laughs> so I noticed, though, after a workout, if I have been strictly vegan for a week or more, I feel faster after a workout. And I'm not sore after a workout after just eating a vegan, clean diet. But when I start eating cheese again, I'm like, oh, I could just have some cheese on my veggie burger. And then every day I start eating cheese and then I start to get sore after my lifts and stuff. So that's my number one goal is to cut the cheese. <laughs> and also to meditate for a minimum of three minutes a day because meditation is very powerful and just being present and quieting your mind can really have a big impact on the rest of your day or you know if you're stressed out and you take a time out and you set a timer for three minutes and just focus on your breath that can really recharge you and reset you and it can help you, you know, figure things out. If you're stumped and, you know, you're having a bad day or you can't figure something out or something went wrong, take a three minute breather. Set a timer, three minutes. That's all you need, you know? I mean, it would be good to do more, but, you know, if you're like me and you feel like you don't have a lot of time, three minutes is all you need. So, um, also, I am giving away a jar of cocoa mint spirulina for the health challenge and to a lucky winner. And also, if anybody would like a free consultation, I'm also doing free consultations for anybody who wants help with their goals, um, reaching their health goals, implementing habits, things like that. And <clears throat> the last thing I want to say is you know, we all, if we are committed to something, we do what it takes. But if we're just interested in something, we're just dabbling in something, you know, we kind of just do it here and there. Like, oh, let's say you want to work out and you're going to get up at 5.30 every morning, but 5.30 comes around and you're tired, so you hit snooze and then you don't get up and work out. And then, you know, you just kind of dabble in it. If you're going to pick one thing to do, put everything you got into that one thing so that you can move forward. Don't just dabble in the one thing. Try to really put effort into it and do it and move that move. That's all I got for me. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nicole. That was a powerful testimony and um, really appreciated your input there. Well, this yes. has been, this has been cool to have all four. I've, I've never um, done this before and then streamed it live. It's been kind of cool to do it. You got the power team here, Blake. <laughs> power team. Yeah. Well, I expected a flex down after that from Tim. What's that? I expected a flex down from you after that comment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Getting healthy is fun. Staying yep. healthy is even better. Well, I know that Tim and Lisa, you guys got a um, got other commitments, so I think a good time to let you go. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, I appreciate you being involved in this and sponsoring it and supporting it and supporting the challengers mm -hmm. and the engagement you're going to have. Um, we have some more details. Lisa's going to do some an exercise class or two, um, and we'll be sending out details on that. Um, 
And just thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Keep encouraging people. People Keep helping people get healthier and make good choices. Thanks for what you do. You inspire me. Yeah, man. We could, we, you're both here. we could actually do this again throughout the challenge a couple of times for Q&As. I'd be down for that. Great idea. Be down for that. In fact, um, if you, Nicole, if you and Lisa would like to get together with me, we could do a presentation at Nature's Pantry at the end of this deal. Get everybody together. Yeah. Well, that's, we, we might have to wait till this whole Corona <laughs> situation is over. Well, it's, it's, over. it's already over, dude. It's, it's a done deal. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I think. Wait, uh, thank you for. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for including all of us and having us on. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank appreciate you it. for hosting this and Nature's Pantry for putting it on and giving something to folks to be positive about during a time that's not, that is a challenging time for a lot of people. I know some of us are kind of like, woo we get to, you know, do some of the things we've always wanted to do. Like, I love working from home, but at the same time, a lot of people are really struggling and it's difficult. So thank you for giving people something positive to focus on. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Well, I'll let you guys go and we'll be in touch. We'll, um, I'm gonna let Lisa and Tim go and then Nicole and I are gonna keep going with the challenge. Thanks guys. Bye guys. See you thank soon. You. Talk Bye. to you guys soon, be well. Too. All right. Shall we um, get rocking and rolling here, Nicole? Yes, ready. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little intro and then we'll start going over the program. Okay. So, um, let's see here. I'm looking for questions at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna go to Okay, so everybody, thanks again for being with us. Um, so glad to have you. I can see a lot of people are tuned in. We got 30 people tuned in right now, so that's really cool. Um, there's there's about 80 people registered for this. I know a lot of people couldn't watch it right now. They were gonna watch it later, and some people aren't on Facebook, so we're gonna figure out a way to, to meet with them and go over the program with them later. Um, but. Um, like I was saying, this challenge, it's not about a quick fix. You know, people want a pill or a fad diet so they don't have to change their lifestyle. But the only way to get lasting results for fitness and health is to change your lifestyle. This health challenge is about putting into practice those healthy habits that will lead to vibrant health and fitness for life. People in our day and age today, people are suffering from chronic disease they're suffering from the standard American diet, which the acronym of that is SAD, by the way. The standard American diet is SAD. People are suffering from a sedentary indoor lifestyle. We have all been affected by these cult cultural trends, but it's not impossible to change. We've seen Tim's changed, Lace's changed, Nicole's changed, I've changed. When I started working here at Nature's Pantry, I had actually just gotten sober um, a little while before that, but I was a bad alcoholic for 12 years. I was terrible on my body, terrible with my health, um, ate terrible. I ha didn't exercise very well, didn't sleep very well. Um, I'm, you know, by the grace of God today, I am 10 years, actually as of March 23rd, I'm 10 years sober. Nice, uh, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, every year that I've worked at Nature's Pantry, it's coming up on seven years now, I have incrementally improved my health and my habits. Um, I'm in the best shape of my life at 37 years old. I'm going to be 38 here in June. Um, and I'm, I don't anticipate that. I, I hope, you know, God willing, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to try my best to be in the best shape I possibly can to live the life, the best life I possibly can to, um, to be a blessing to the people in my life, the people I work with, my family, the people around me that I have an impact. I want to be a positive impact. Um, you know, I've seen people that live, you know, whether they live to be 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90, I've seen people who live those last decade or two of their life, really bad quality, not fun, suffering. Um, it's not fun for them, not fun for the family. I see, I, but I've also seen on the other spectrum of it, 
I've seen people who are in their 80s and 90s and who have lived really healthy lifestyles and who are able to, to you know, be a blessing to their family, to be able to serve people, love people, clear up until, you know, um, you know, I, Dennis and Linda Clavel have been a huge example for this. Dennis's parents um, passed away last year at, I think, like 95 and 93. I, I'm not 100% on their age. I know they're in their 90s. And um, yeah, Dennis, um, Bob was amazing. And they were really active. Peggy was coming over here to the store and visiting us, clear up until she was quite old. And um, my wife's grandma and grandpa, um, she actually, I went and visited her in a nursing home after she broke her arm. She was like 90 years old and broke her arm. And I went and visited her and she was sharing a room with another gal who was like in her fifties. And somebody had brought her McDonald's while she was there. And she was like, you know, overweight, unhappy, unhealthy, miserable, um, you know, just had a negative outlook, which, you know, if you don't feel good, when I don't feel good, I am not very nice. I don't have a positive outlook. But it was funny, the contrast, because we went and visited her grandma, Isla, who was sitting there like, are they going to let me out of here? And she's like, you know, the food here is terrible. Do you, I'm craving raw vegetables. Do you guys have some raw celery or something? <laughs> or like, we didn't carry any celery with us. That's but. so cute. I love it. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to check and make sure we're still live here. Mine froze, actually. Nope, I think it is. Yeah, still right. okay. um, yeah and so, uh, anywho, so so that's you know the the thing about it is um, our mission at Nature's Pantry is to you know caring for your health needs is our mission, and we have a lot of wonderful partners in in our health partners here with Tim and Lisa and. Um, Nicole, and we also have a couple partners who aren't, weren't able to join us tonight. Justin Hernandez with sports performance training. Um, he's, been, he's been a great influence in the community. He coached a lot of the athletes that won state for football and some of his athletes won state at wrestling too. Um, we have um, also Live Fit, uh, Olivia Westensko. She does some amazing classes, health classes of all different varieties. She has a toddler class, she has a yoga class, she has you know, a high intensity classes and low intensity classes. She's going to be streaming some of those from our Facebook group. So tune into those. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the thing is, there's never been a more important time to get healthy. Look, look at what we're seeing right now with COVID-19. We are seeing that the people who have underlying health conditions, which in some cases or most cases have been caused by poor health choices, these people are more likely to have severe, severe illness and even die from COVID. The principles we talk about tonight and the habits you will be putting into practice over the next four weeks truly are the building blocks to health. These habits can strengthen your natural defenses against diseases like COVID-19 and can lead to vibrant health for life. So, you know, we all know about diet and exercise. We have all heard eat your vegetables and, you know, so forth and so on. Um, the, but we need reminded. We need reminded of these things. We need supported, um, and we need accountability in order to pull it off. We need a system. We need a program. We need to to come along together to do this. Um, and the simplest things can be the most impactful too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know this this program guide that you you all have now um, that we've put together is it is holistic it is complete it is complex it is multifaceted but they are simple habits once you get them and and the thing about it is like nicole and lisa and tim have all said pick one of those things that you're really going to lean into that you're really going to focus on if you come out of this challenge with one habit that you've improved one good habit that you've really solidified in your life then you will have won. you this will have been successful for you because you know what? As soon as you get one habit, other good habits follow. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So let's um, we'll get into this this um, plan here. Um, I want to. Um, so just briefly, I'm going to mention the meals um, that we're going to do. 
I'll be sending out more details about the meal plan and the meals. So we're going to do next week. I think we're going to do the first week of the challenge, two live stream cooking classes. Missy and I are going to do that from our house. Um, we're going to send you the recipe, the shopping list out ahead of time and the dates for that so that you can come in and buy the stuff you need and then be ready for the class so you can follow along. Um, and so they're going to be, well, I'm probably only going to announce one or two classes at a time because we may have to change it. So I'll, you'll have information on that soon. Go ahead, Nicole. Do you have something? Uh, nope. I was just looking for the comments on Facebook to see if we had any questions. But. Okay, cool. Yeah, and um, so then the exercise classes, um, Nicole is going to do a couple of those, and we're going to be sending you details about that. We're finalizing the details of the schedule for that. Um, go ahead. And a pantry cleaning class as well, yeah. so yeah. that everyone can see what we're doing when I come into your closet and, um, you know, what you're looking for on the food labels when you're picking choices at the grocery store. Yeah. And some people like to throw things away right away. So if you have anything in your pantry with the ingredients that I name, you know, poisonous, <laughs> you might want to throw them away. You might want to wait, but, you know, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Oh, that'll be cool. I look forward to that. That's a great idea. Um, and then the Facebook group um, accountability. We'll talk some more about that too. Um, so this is a four week health challenge. It's from April 19th to May 16th. So it goes Sunday to Saturday, four weeks in a row. Um, that's how your program guide is set up. Um, each at the end of every week. So on Sunday, so you're gonna finish a week on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you can send the points, email, the, email me the points. Um, you've all gotten an email from me at this point, so you have my address, but I'll, I'll send out a reminder about that with the address um, every week. They're going to be due um, Monday morning by 10 after each week complete. So you have a day and a half to get them to me or so. Um, and then I'll also be sending out anonymous result standings and point standings. So when you email me that, that um, points, just send me the total for the week. That's all I need and I will enter that into a spreadsheet. Then what I'll do is once a week or so, I will send out a list of the standings and it'll just kind of show where you are on the points list, but it'll be anonymous names won't be included in that list. Um, there's gonna be three different participant groups that, you know, because um, there's health pros involved, we're gonna have a separate group. So challengers won't be competing against health pros. Um, and we're gonna have a Nature's Pantry employees, our team, we're going to have our separate group too because um, they got we're going to have a separate prize for our own team on that um then so yeah there's a lot of great prizes i'll send out a list and details on the prizes that are out there and you know this this can be competitive if you're competitive it doesn't have to be competitive if you're not it's it can be just you and the challenge um it's totally fine however you want to approach it um i think we had an employee um what glenda hart she just knocked this thing out of the park last time. She really, um, she had the most points out of anybody. She beat all the health pros and everybody. Um, and she was, she had some tremendous results. Um, lost weight, some of her pain went away. She had more energy. She was just feeling better in general. Um, so it was really neat to hear some, her story and, and some of the other stories we heard last at the end of last challenge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So everybody who participates will get a month long discount at Nature's Pantry. All you gotta do is come into the store when you do your shopping and at checkout, just tell the cashier that you're a, a challenger and they'll have a list to be able to verify that. Um, yeah, so let's get into the, oh, yeah, let's get into the, well, actually I'll finish this before we get into the details. So on the Facebook group, um, if you haven't, you need to like Nature's Pantry page. You, you have to be a friend with me, Blake Bars, on Facebook. Um, it's either one or both of those. I can't figure it out, but just go do both. I'm happy to be a friend with you on Facebook. Um, 
And then you have to go and request to be a member of the Vibrant U Health Challenge number two group. And if you need any help finding that, look, you know, send me a note or a text or an email and I'll help you out with that. Um, so the, like I said, that the thing about the Facebook group, it's not necessary to be part of the challenge, but I definitely noticed the people who were engaged with it um, got seemed to get more out of it because they had some camaraderie and some accountability and some encouragement from the people that were on there posting and talking to other others. Um, and then, you know, at least, at least some people were on the group, but they were like in employees of nature's pantry. So they were tied in to the group here that was doing it. So they had that um, camaraderie and teamwork and team spirit and encouragement here. So if you're not going to do the Facebook group, try to tie in with a friend or two on this, at least that's doing it. Yes, the accountability can be really important, especially yeah. if you have had problems in the past trying to do new things. Um, because, you know, when we get uncomfortable, that's when the change really happens if we can stick with it. But if we get uncomfortable and then we quit, if we have someone holding us accountable, we're less likely to want to do that. So, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And, and, uh, it's like um, if I have to get up early to do something, if I have to meet somebody, I'm motivated to get there. But if it's just up to me and I'm the only one, then it's like, well, I can just do what I want. Or And that's why CrossFit works for, so well because of the camaraderie and the accountability. Yes. Yes. Just, I love going to CrossFit just because of that reason, you know. Yeah, it's motivating for sure. And and we witnessed that in our in our challenge before. You know, it was like a week. We were like a week finished with the challenge the first time. And team members at Nature's Pantry were like, um, I think we should start that again because I'm already kind of falling off the wagon a little bit. So, so we did. Yep, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, and we were actually thinking, we were like, when we've been having to do so much changes at the store and policy changes, and it's been pretty stressful with the whole COVID thing and trying to figure out how to, navigate all of this, right. um, stay, stay open, um, navigate the risk of it, and just do all the extra things we've had to do. Um, and our, you guys have been amazingly understanding with all of it, so we really appreciate you for that. Um, but yeah, we were like, we're just not going to do the challenge for a while. We'll wait. And then we kind of got over that hump and started to figure this out. And we're like, actually, you know, there's never been a more important time to do a health challenge than now. So let's do it. And I, honestly, I feel like, you know, you just really have to look at the positive of this whole situation. And no matter what is bad going on in your life or in the world, you have to try to focus on the positive because if you let it drag you down and consume you, then you're not going to accomplish anything, you know? Yeah. So yeah. the positive I see out of this whole situation is right now we have less pollution. People are spending more time with their families. You know, um, they are able to cook healthier meals or, you know, take that walk with their dog or, you know, whatever it may be for you. But there is definitely more time now to do those simple little things that we, for some reason, can't seem to grasp on a daily basis. So. Yeah, absolutely. And wearing masks, wearing gloves, washing our hands. Um, and it's, it's like, is how come nobody is talking about like health. How come nobody's talking about like increasing your overall health, boosting your immune system? Like, it's like, if we really, for does real, none of the medical es experts in the whole country yeah. know any Thank of this you. stuff? Thank you. Yes, I agree 100%. Because if we treated food as medicine, we wouldn't have half of the problems that we do in my personal opinion, you know? Food yeah. can either build us up or it can break us down you know right. and there's a lot more to it than that but mm -hmm. like you said the sad american diet it mostly starts right there because we're all just we're used to the convenience of it quite frankly right. and you know that's what sucks you in but like Lisa was touching on is restaurants aren't you know open right now they can do to goes but you're not eating out as much you know so that's amazing that's a positive right there to focus on you know you can have a home cooked meal yeah yeah absolutely no that's so so we weren't hearing anybody talk about health during a national health crisis so we're like 
maybe we should talk about some health. Like, let's, let's work on that. So here we go. Let's do this thing. Um, so challenger commitments. So I wanted to go over these commitments with everybody. Um, if you're doing this challenge, we're just asking that you commit to these things. Um, it's going to help you be successful, help the whole program be successful. So we're asked that you do a full effort in all aspects of the challenge, um, but also adapt the challenge to you and where you are at. Keep it simple and achievable. So full effort, but also we all need to be, we need to, you need to, wherever you're at, let's improve from there. We're not talking about per perfection in this challenge. We're talking about progress. So let's, wherever you're at, that's your baseline. Let's make progress in this challenge. Okay. So um, full effort, but adapt it to where you are. Full, follow the program guide as closely as you can so you can actually see results which will motivate you to keep it up. Okay, so we're gonna talk about plant-based whole food diet in this challenge. Um, some of you may be ready to go fully that way, like we are and Nicole is, and um, Tim already has been that way for many a long time. Uh, and I talked about that a lot at the last challenge. Um, or you may be like, I'm never going to go like away from animal products completely. That is fine. Wherever you're at is totally fine. Um, any just it can be adapted to where you're at, apply the things that make sense for you in your life. Um, so, but here's the thing to keep in mind, right? So um, there's actually a doctor, his name's um, Dean Ornish, who his program of plant-based whole food diet actually got approved by Medicare to treat heart disease. It's the first nutritional program that's actually getting paid for by Medicare to treat heart disease. Now, in their program, it's very similar to a lot, a lot of what we'll talk about. It's whole food, plant-based. Um, but the thing is, he says, you know, we try to actually get people to go as fully whole food, plant-based from as fast as they possibly can, because they're going to see such tremendous results that it's going to motivate them to stick with it. Whereas people who just slowly do it over time aren't going to see those tremendous results and it'll be harder to stick to it. Is that so, the eat more, way less? that you're um uh, his book that i read is called undo it it's dr dean ornish i'm not yeah, sure i had the pleasure of learning from him in coaching school amazing guy oh cool i think he also did eat more way less which again is like the same idea and so he was saying in there you know rather than eating a whole box of donuts or whatnot just eat a whole watermelon instead you know because at least the watermelon is giving you nutrients and the donut is just empty calories you know what right. I mean? so yeah. he was really big on that eat more plant-based yeah, yeah. And that, yes and that's absolutely what we always encourage people here at the store and linda i've learned from linda on this is let's not worry about getting rid of all the bad things in the world. Let's focus on adding in good things, one thing at a time. Now, I'm at a place where in my life where I've kind of done that and I've built the foundation of my life on this, these foundational habits. So I'm ready to kind of take it to the, to the next level. But, you know, whatever, wherever you want to do, if you want to just focus on certain things and build in certain habits in this challenge, if you want to go full tilt and go all the way on this. I totally support that, encourage that. Um, wherever you're at is totally fine. Um, so, but, but again, I just encourage those who are able and willing to try to go as plant-based whole food as much as possible. And we'll give you some resources for that as we move forward here. Um, I, the, one of the, the next commitment, the next challenger commitment is to attend and watch as many meetings and classes as possible. So, watch the launch meeting that explains the program. That's kind of important. Um, then, you know, I participate in the other things that we have, the cooking classes, the exercise classes, you know, you don't have to do all of that stuff, but do the best you can to participate in those things. So we, we also ask that you support nature's pantry, that you support the health pros are putting this on because we want to be able to continue to do this and we want to be able to do it for free to our community. And so if you're, if you can buy your ingredients here at the store, if you can um, reach out and support Nicole and support Tim and support Lisa and Mountain Valley and Justin and, and live fit and the folks who are, who are helping put these things on, then um, 
that'll help us be able to do this, to continue to serve the community, to continue to provide for your, the health needs of the community. Um, and we want to do more of these challenges for, for we want to just do, keep doing them and doing them, and we want to always do them for free. So we also ask that um, you submit your points on time every week, and that um, the last commitment is to watch at least one movie and read at least one book on the approved list, which I'll be sending out um, within a couple days. So, okay, let's get into the details of the program. I'm thinking we can get this all, go through this whole thing in 20 minutes or so, hopefully, but half an hour at the most. Yeah, I think we can do it. Okay, here we go. So, so you wanna pull up that program guide, that Vibrant U Health Challenge program guide. The, uh, I sent out in the email. So hopefully most of you, yeah, thanks Nicole. Most of you have had a chance. Actually, you know, I could go ahead and share the screen at this time. Maybe that would be a good idea. Let's do that. All right, so maybe let me know if you guys can see that okay on Facebook in the comments. Um, so, okay. So I think this should, this looks yeah. like it's working to me. Looks so, good. Okay. So here's the, here's the challenge. Um, every week you're going to, so every day of the week. So this challenge starts on Sunday, April 19th. Okay. These are your positive habit plus points as you, and you do one of these every day. And then back down here is the bad minus habit points. So each day you're going to take your points for water, nutrition, sleep, exercise, supplements, sunshine, fresh air, rest and recharge, spiritual health, learning, bonus book or movie points, and your personal goal. Then you, then you have a total here. And then you're, each day you have your minus points for your bad habits. Okay, so you fill out each of those. And then you have your total minus points. And your total daily points is your total positive points minus your total negative points, okay? So we do that every day of the week. And by the end of the week, we have a grand total for the week. And that's the, oh, somebody's saying they can't read the print. Well, if you can't read it, hopefully you have a copy of it at home um, that you can um, be looking at while we talk about it. Um, it might not show up very well on a phone. It might be, this might be better if you have a computer or something, or if you turn your phone landscape version, that might help. Um, so let's talk about water. Nicole, what's, what, what's, why is water so important? Water is so important because we are mostly water and it flushes our organs, our vital organs. It uh, hydrates us. It, you know, helps our brain. A lot of people who get headaches, the first question I like to ask is how much water have you drank or when was the last time you drank water? Because most of the time, believe it or not, if you just drink a glass of water, your headache can go away because your brain is getting dehydrated. Um, and the most important time, in my opinion, to drink water is as soon as you wake up in the morning on an empty stomach. And it can be really beneficial to add like lemon and cayenne in there because the lemon and cayenne help detox the body more and the cayenne sticks to mucus and helps flush it out of your system. Um, yeah. So water, water, water. And you know, if you like me, I don't really like drinking water to be honest with you. So I like to just chug a glass throughout the day. Like I'll fill a glass up and leave it on the counter and then I just chug it as I'm walking by and then I'll fill it up again and set it back on the counter so in an hour I can just chug it again, you know? So if you're like me, there's a tip for you if you don't like to tip on water all day. Um, but water is key to weight loss, it's key to detoxification. If you get constipated a lot, you definitely need to drink more water to get things moving. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That it's so true. Like you said, we're our bodies are seventy percent water, so it would make sense that we're needing to drink lots of water. We need a pure, clean water source. Um, some bottled water you find today is actually acidic. If you did a pH test on it, so you want to be careful what kind of bottled water you're buying. Um, we have some alkaline, a lot of options for alkaline here at the store. Um, 
We also have the the Cove Artesian Blue Water you can buy in the big five gallon jugs. And you can also, we have a, you can refill water bottles here at the store. Um, so you don't have to buy new plastic bottles um, with the Cove water. Um, at home, we just have a filter. Legrand water is pretty good. I did a test on it and we just put in an inline filter into the sink to get some of the chlor more of the chlorine out. Um, and so that's what I mostly drink. I fill those up and, and um, and so half your body weight in ounces, let's talk about that. Half your, I weigh 160 pounds, so I'm drinking 80 ounces of water. 160 pounds, 80 ounces of water. That's five of my 16 ounce bottles, so I drink five of those bottles a day. Like Nicole said, I really try to get it in as early as I can as possible because if I have most of the water done by noon, then it's really easy the rest of the day. Plus, I'm not going to be drinking a bunch of water before bed and then have to pee all night. So <laughs> Right. So I like I drink um, usually before I leave the house I drink one or two of those bottles. Then before noon I by noon I have maybe one or two left at the most. Um, and the thing about it, your body adjusts to the amount of hydration you're giving it. Um, our bodies de were designed to adapt to a situation. So if we were you know in a drought, um, we could survive. But you. So I've noticed when I wasn't drinking very much, my body felt like it was getting enough water. I mean, that's just how I operate. Um, but then when I started drinking more water, when I started drinking the eight ounces, it was like, yes, my body's like, yes, give me that much water. And then some days it's even like, that's not enough. Like I feel dehydrated by the end of the day, even with that amount of water. So, um, you know, the thing about it is water can protect your joints, brain, heart, pancreas, and skin. Um, like Nicole said, it helps get things moving in the colon. It help, you know, if you're not having regular bowel movements, you, water is first step. Um, it aids in elimination. It can stall box, stave off false hunger pains. Um, it can stave off premature aging. So. Oh yeah, the hunger pain one. That's a good one because if you feel hungry and you drink a glass of water, most of the time you're not going to feel hungry anymore and so when we feel hungry even though we just ate maybe you know an hour ago or something that's because we're actually thirsty and our body is telling us we need to drink so yeah okay so nutrition let's talk about nutrition um oh wait one more thing on the water so you get plus three points per day for drinking half your body weight in ounces so if i drink 80 ounces is half my body weight, I put in three points there. That's the max I can get per day. Now, some people weren't, were having trouble doing that much water. So I adjusted this to have, you can get a point and a half if you do one third your body weight in ounces, okay? So you, at least, okay? So that's at least some points if you're not able to do the full half your body weight, okay? So nutrition. Let's talk about nutrition. What are your thoughts on whole food, plant-based, Nicole? Well, I definitely uh, believe in doing a lot of like whole grain, rice, beans, quinoa, millets, uh, all the veggies, fruit, nuts, seeds, pretty much anything that grows on a plant that is fresh or alive, you want to eat as close to nature as nature intended. So if you're eating, you know, lots of vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, all of those good things, then in my opinion, um, you know, that's a point, that's a meal, you know, with all of those good things in it. And if you're a meat eater and you eat dairy, try to just do organic and grass fed. Um, you know, a lot of the time meat and dairy have a lot of hormones and antibiotics in them because the cattle got sick or whatnot. So you really want to be careful with meat and dairy. And dairy is very mucus forming in the body. And, um, you know, like I was saying, my number one goal is to quit eating cheese because I know for a fact when I work out and I've been eating dairy, I am sore and I don't feel as fast. And that shows me right there that it really does make a difference in your body, um, how your body responds to what you're putting into it. Um, and meat can be very carcinogenic as well. So you want to make sure that you're getting a good quality meat, grass-fed, grass-finished, 
um, elk, deer, wild game, you know, if you're getting chicken and turkey, you want to make sure it's free range and organic eggs, same thing. Um, and it has been proven actually that chickens that have a free range diet actually have higher omegas in their eggs. So, and also whole food supplementation is great. Um, I might be getting ahead of us, but that is part of nutrition too. If you're, you know, drinking green drinks and you take like barley greens or chlorella or some kind of green powder, uh, Tim's green powder, that's a good one. Um, you know, just anything green is especially really good for nutrition. Um, even if you're not drinking it, if you're eating it kale, Swiss chard, rhubarb leaves, you know, beet greens, all of it, not rhubarb leaves, but, um, you know, I didn't mean rhubarb, I meant that. Right. All the other greens, anyway. Yeah. But yes, just make sure it's as close to nature as you can be. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that's a good point about the leafy greens and the vegetables. So, you know, we talked about our bodies being 70% water. Well, our vegetables are almost all fruits and vegetables are near 90% water. Um, and so, and then a lot of animal products and foods are like 60-ish percent. So it would make sense that plants, plant foods going to mesh more with our body, right? So um, here's a good example. What, what doesn't mix well with water? Oil right so what what food products create the most oil and grease and fat it'd be animal products like meat and cheese and dairy um, a good example a good analogy of this um, is when we, we just bought a house it's 100 years old we've been there a couple of years but when we first moved in we couldn't get the kitchen sink to drain and i tried everything i tried snaking it i tried chemicals i tried to get the thing clear i couldn't get it clear clear so i called my plumber friend and we crawled under the house and we cut out like 10 feet of drain pipe. And guess what it was clogged with? Straight grease and fat from whatever they were frying in their frying pan. That had been burning up over time. Yep. And in that movie, Forks Over Knives, I watched a triple bypass surgery. And what they pulled out of that artery looked exactly like what was in my, my kitchen drain. Okay. So, um, it's, you know, we, we know all about it. If, if you're, you know, if you're at a point where you're ready to go whole food plant-based, I definitely would advocate for that. If you're not, let's just add in those, let's add those greens, the, that fruit, vegetable. If you're not at a place today where you're eating one fruit and one vegetable every day, then let's start there. If you're at a place where, you know, you're eating some, some raw or, fruit or vegetable with every meal, let's bump it up to the next level. Um, so like Nicole said, um, you wanna eat an unprocessed fibrous rainbow. Um, there's so much fiber in grains, beans, nuts, seeds, fruit, vegetables, they keep your colon swept out. Five to seven servings of dark, bright colored fruits and vegetables every day provide your body with very powerful antioxidants and enzymes it needs to function and repair. To preserve valuable nutrients, look for food grown without much processing, okay? So eat something raw with every meal. So, you know, kind of where I'm at right now is I pretty much eat a whole food plant-based breakfast. I have usually a couple pieces of fruit. I, I'm weird. I will actually peel a grapefruit and eat a whole grapefruit. I'll eat an apple. Um, and then I, what I have is I have some whole grain toast with um, peanut butter and applesauce. And I have a couple of those pieces and... And that usually gets me through till lunchtime. Um, yeah, that sounds great. I like grapefruit by itself too, but if I can, I like to put sea salt on it because it tastes like, you know, balances that out. Yeah. A little sea salt. Oatmeal is a great, very healthy breakfast. Oatmeal with fruit. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, um, there's a lot on this nutrition thing. Yeah, uh, green smoothies. You can do easier overripe fruits and put spinach or kale or anything in there. You can get green smoothies or green drinks from the juice bar. You know, um, those can be really filling, especially if you add like peanut butter or hemp seeds or almond butter or, you know, some kind of protein to them. They can sustain you till lunchtime. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think one of the, 
it's really hard. Um, it's hard right now because diet and food is tied in with our culture. And so to be able to make to there, there's a lot of cultural pressure, you know, like I remember just, you know, having friends make fun of you if you're a vegetarian or, you know, and, you know, real men eat meat, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, I guess I would say yes, like my friends who bow hunt and they go hike into the wilderness and shoot an elk with their bow and haul it out on their backs. Um, yes, that is manly. Going through the McDonald's drive through is not manly. I'm sorry. And, you know, I don't know how good it is to be manly, uh, how manly you want to be. But you, if I guess if eating all that crap makes you manly, then you're not going to be manly very long. Well, it's just like now it's cool to wear pink for men and it used to not be. So I feel like we're starting, we're getting, you know, the trend is on the rise. <laughs> Eating plants is manly now. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, I have, I have friends who are very healthy, very into lifting and stuff. They eat unprocessed, but, you know, they hunt and fish and they eat that stuff. If you're going to do that, that's the best source you can get, you can get it from. Yeah, my husband and daughter eat meat, and Kenny is a hunter, and so I like that he gets a lot of the meat himself that they're eating, you know? I personally have just done enough research over the last year to where I've been convinced about whole food plant-based. Um, so in some of the reading material we're going to give you, the list we're going to give you, um, there's actually a movie, it's called Forks Over Knives. Um, in that movie, um, Colin... Oh, Caldwell. Oh, shoot. I forgot his name. Dr. Colin. Anyway. Oh, B. It's not Esselton. Anyway, the doctor that wrote the book, The China Study, um, he did a study on um, rats. And he found that he, when he fed them 5% animal protein in their diet, he turned off cancer. When it was 20% animal protein in their diet, it turned on cancer. And so he was finding that if it was a very small amount of animal protein in the diet, that it would turn off cancer in the rats. And when it was a higher percentage, it would turn on cancer. And so and what, what's commonly understood in the science community is that what happens in lab wraps happens also in humans. And, and they, they wanted to do a big test on, on humans. And they finally got a chance to in a study called the China study, where they looked at culture, uh, many areas in China and took health statistics. And what they found is in places where there was a lot of animal products, where people were more affluent, where the cities were, there was escalated disease, heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, um, autoimmune issues, allergies, like the list kind of goes on and on. There's so many um, issues related to it. Whereas in some of the more poor and rural areas where people hadn't been introduced to that or they couldn't afford it and they their their diets consisted mainly of um, like rice and beans or, or like vegetables. Um, those people, like some, some diseases that we know in the Western world didn't even exist. Like they didn't even have anybody have a heart attack or die from heart disease. It wasn't even known. So I think those stats are pretty, pretty, um, compelling. You know, I think, um, why aren't we hearing about some of this stuff today? And, and I could go on and on about the books that, and there'll be some of them in this, but like the book, how not to die that just goes, on and on about the health consequences of animal products versus eating whole food plant-based. Um, but, uh, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. I'm sure it was really good. <laughs> It'll uh, come back to you. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, oh man, I forgot. So what are your thoughts, Nicole? on the reading and the movies. Nutrition. Oh, so nutrition, sorry. Um, yeah, I just feel like the closest to nature as nature intended, guys, you know? Um, and if you're craving sugar, you definitely need more greens because bitters are the sugar antidote. So. Eat as many greens as you can if you're having sugar cravings and eat fruits. You know, use dates, apples, uh, bananas. You can freeze bananas and make nice 
cream, we call it. And I mean, you have access to Google, you can Google a recipe or there's some on my Instagram. Um, and I can share one to the Facebook group too. But if you're craving sugar or craving other processed foods, find a way to make it yourself or pick an option that is minimally processed. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. So maybe I'll think of that someday, but um, one thing I was going to say as far as organic goes, so a good, first of all, a good movie for watching for why plant whole food plant-based is good, the movie Forks Over Knives, and that's going to be on the list, and also the movie The Game Changers. Those are two really good movies that will explain to you about whole food plant-based, okay? Oh, just remembered it. So do you guys, does anybody ever heard of Dr. Um, well, you've all heard of the keto diet. You've all heard of what's the other one now? Well, now's the keto. Before it was paleo. Before that, it was um, another one. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing blanks on all these things I'm so good at. So, um, anyway. Okay, we're going to go back to the organic. Apparently, I'm not supposed to talk about that one. <laughs> So um, we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about the organic thing, okay? So a good movie on why organic's important is uh, Secret Ingredients movie, okay? Oh, Atkins, Atkins diet. Thank you, Texter. So there's the Atkins diet, then there was the Paleo diet, then there's now there's keto. So back in the day when Atkins was coming out there was another doctor and I forgot his name too but the point is he was doing whole food plant-based and he was like look this is ch gonna change the world this is amazing like look at the diseases that we're able to reverse and prevent with this whole food plant-based diet and the publishers called him in and they said look we want you to write about a high a low carb high protein diet and he laughed at him he said what are you talking about why would I do that like that's exactly the opposite of what I'm taught. What I'm teaching is going to help. And they said, well, we're not going to publish your books anymore. And it wasn't, but a month later, Dr. Atkins diet came out. It was the high protein, low carb diet. And that publisher had ties in the meat and dairy industry. Okay. So what we're, the thing about the animal products that we're consuming in the U S today, we are able to consume animal products and processed sugar and processed flour at unprecedented levels never before seen in the human race because we've become so efficient at producing them. It's everywhere around us and it's a dollar. You can go through a drive through and get it for a dollar nonstop all day long. And we're so busy, it just become what we're doing. So we're consuming these products at unprecedented level, right? Well, the other thing is now there's these huge billion dollar companies that have a very vested interest in these food products, okay? So they're going to be paying scientists to come up with the results to tell us that this is this is good for us. Um, so that that was what where the Atkins diet came from was pressure from those folks to put a put a thing. For one, not only was it what the companies wanted to say, but it's also what we wanted to hear because we wanted to hear we can continue to eat these things and still get the benefits we're looking for. So it worked. It sold. They hit the public, the consumer on an emotional level. They, that's what they do. They attack us at an emotional level and make us believe that we need these things, you know, with their marketing schemes and their, you know, fake thing. Like when they say on the package, oh, natural or organic, a lot of the time, even if it says organic on the package, you still need to read the ingredient label because they can have one ingredient that's organic and they can put that on the label. Right. You know, so yeah, just exactly. be aware of what you're putting in those ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing that I've seen, and I think Nicole's experienced this too in her work um, is there's like four main, there's four main things that people have trouble with that they really, that they come in here. They're like, I'm having these health issues. I'm really struggling with these things. And they're looking for some dietary because, you know, you go to the doctor today, they don't say, okay, here's what's going on. And we can give you this pill. That's going to have some side effects or, or we can give you surgery or we can do these lifestyle things that can possibly help you. They're not even the lifestyle thing is an option, but they're not even telling you about it. 
because one, it's not paying their paycheck. Um, for two, they're not trained in it. There's like no classes for any of medical professionals today on nutrition. They have like 15 credit hours or something out of their whole degree on nutrition. So we go there and they say, well, we're just covering, and then we're just covering symptoms. We're just covering symptoms with a pill, with a drug, and we're not treating any of the underlying causes of those problems. It's a Band-Aid. Right, a Band -Aid. it's a Band-Aid on a, on a gushing wound. So- Gotta get to the root cause of the problem, which is usually nine times out of 10 in our gut because Yes. You know, all the stuff in those foods is wreaking havoc on our microbiome system. Right. And so before the, yes, that's so true. And that's such a good point about our gut. And so what we're finding is our health is so tied to our gut. Our health is so tied to what we're putting in our mouth, into our stomach. 70% um, of our immune system is in our gut. Um, we're finding that there's certain food groups that people are really starting to have, or not food groups, but there's certain types of things people are really starting to have trouble with. And the ones that I've, it's animal products is one that most people start to really have issues with. It's products with, that are GMO or sprayed with pesticides. Mm -hmm. And it's processed flour and processed sugar. So yeah. those, those main things are the things I see people coming in and when they get rid of those things, they're, they are, have a new lease on life because their gut heals they're able to get their energy back. They're able to get, you know, things moving again. And um, yeah, and wheat is one of those processed flowers because they spray the wheat with glyphosate before they harvest it too. So you're getting, you know, so many chemicals, the roundup right into your gut. That stuff was designed to blow up bug intestines. You know, they're living microbiome. Like we're humans, we're the same. We're living just like them, except we're way bigger. So it just takes longer. It just wreaks havoc on our system yeah. over time rather than killing us, you know, fast because we're not little like them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really good point about the organic and the pesticides. And that's so, so a really good movie to watch to tell you about why organics important is and non GMO is important is secret ingredients. That's a really good movie to explain it. And I honestly, even after working here several years, I didn't quite buy into it 100% until I saw that movie. And it was like, Oh, that makes sense. So here's the thing. So Roundup was designed as an industrial drain cleaner. Okay, so they put it in these plants, they, they put it through the pipes. And when it came out, it killed all the vegetation. And they're like, Oh, crap. Well, Maybe we can modify this to be a herbicide. And so they did, because they're a chemical company. And they started applying it to crops to kill weeds and modified it to kill weeds. But it wasn't, you know, it did pretty well and we were able to do quite well. And, and don't get me wrong, like the intention of all this is good intention. Like we're trying to produce more food, be more efficient, um, feed more people with less, less resources. So, I mean, the intention's good. It's just the unintended consequences that came about. So here you have this drain cleaner, right? That you're spraying on the crops, but the crops aren't doing as well as you'd like, but around this time, genetic modification comes around and they find that they can genetically modify the plant to hold up to the Roundup, okay? So that's what you call Roundup ready crop is a crop that has been genetically modified to hold up to Roundup. So I, for me, you know, I, you know, this is what I believe. I believe God designed me and he designed the food to go with my body, okay? So as soon as you take that food and you genetically modify it, it's not fitting the body anymore, okay? And so when the genetics aren't matching up anymore, you're gonna have some unintended consequences. Now, then on top of that, you go in and spray an industrial drain cleaner on the food, no wonder we're having some problems. You know, autism is up astronomical amounts in our world today. Yes. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, research out there that's showing that that can be tied to Glyphosate, which is what's round, what the main ingredient of Roundup is. So, so that's important. So, so watch that movie. Um, if you're not already convinced of that, watch that movie. It'll it'll educate you on that. And also, you know, just try to find the organic stuff that you can put in your body. You know, our bodies recreate. We recreate the cells of our body. It's like ever so often our we regenerate all the cells in our body. Okay. So we're constantly rebuilding ourselves. What are we rebuilding ourselves with? 
we're rebuilding ourselves with the, what we put in our body. Okay. So if we're putting junk in, that's what the, that's what we're rebuilding with. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to put sludge in your gas tank in your car, you know, same yeah. thing with your body. You want to put the good stuff in guys. And, you know, I hear you genetics do play a role. Um, genetics. Um, I, Linda has often told me genetics load the gun, but our daily lifestyle pulls the trigger. Okay. So, so let's, um, let's be mindful of that you can actually alter your genes with your habits and by what you put in your body. You can alter your genes with your thoughts. You can alter, change your brain. You can change your body. Um, so, you know, while these things are, you know, we have the genetics we've been given, we can still be the best versions of ourselves and yes. we can recreate ourselves in many ways. Okay. You can control things with lifestyle you know it's not just about the food the lifestyle really is important and you know i have interstitial cystitis which is an incurable bladder condition so basically the lining in my bladder was eroding and the, the doctor literally gave me a paper saying it was caused from food preservatives and i was like why are they still allowed to put these in our food if the doctor's paper literally says stay away from these because these will cause the bladder symptoms that you're having and i'm i was like this is just perplexing and more and more women are getting interstitial cystitis like it is becoming a thing now you know and it's because of all of those things in the food so you really and i'm controlling mine i'm not taking the medication that they wanted me to take in fact i have i still have the bottle but i just keep it so i can remind myself why i do what i do every day you know because i have a bag full of medications and i don't take them now you know i just i take food as medicine yeah. but you can control these things even type 1 diabetes you know the incurable type you can control that with your lifestyle and with your diet so yes that's so true well um nutrition was such a big topic i wanted to make sure and spend some time on that um but i also want to cover the rest of this I, you know it's a big um it's a big list i i think we'll just try to go through it real quick rapid fire here and just talk about the points and how to do it um okay. so okay sleep okay so Here's your, you get three points a day for seven to nine hours of sleep, zero points for less than seven and zero points for more than nine hours. So you don't want to get less than seven hours and you don't want to get more than nine. There's studies that show bad results either way. Your max points per day is three. So all you can get here is three per day. Okay. Okay. Um, type in your question if you have any questions on that. Okay. Um, you know, if you're someone who can't get it straight, um, it's okay where you're at. Just try to get seven total per day, okay? Um, exercise. Exercise is so important. We were built to move. We were designed to move our bodies, okay? Sitting all day, standing all day, just being sedentary, being inside, not, not the best for us. So um, one point for every 30 minutes of exercise. If you do a 30-minute workout on Monday, one point. If you hike for three hours on Saturday, six points. Walking during the day also counts, but you have to track your steps. So it, I, I Googled it, 4,000 steps is about 30 minutes. So you get one point for every 4,000 steps, okay? You get max of 10 points per day. So if you hike for five hours, that's 10 points, okay? Because we changed that from last time because we were only able to get like three points a day. So we changed it so you can get those days that you do a lot of exercise, you can get a lot of points for those days. Okay. Type in your questions if you have any questions on that. Any thoughts on X? I mean, I could go on for exercise for so long. It's so important. Any thoughts on it, Nicole? Yeah, movement is really important too, you know, especially uh, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but yoga. <laughs> and you don't have to do deep restorative yoga. There is plenty of yoga, like Colleen McIntosh, the booty yoga. Um, you know, power yoga is one of my favorites in booty yoga, but it doesn't have to be this slow, deep restorative yoga. Just try to find a yoga class that you like, um, because stretching and, you know, if you think about it, you watch animals every time they get up, your dog literally does down dog or stretches. You know what I mean? 
it's so good for us to move the body to, you know, just stretch those joints, ligaments, muscles. We weren't made to sit all the time. So even just, you know, if you are sedentary, if you sit a lot right now, just take a walk, you know, even start with five or 10 minutes and get up and move, you know, just meet yourself at your level and go from there. But movement is important, especially they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's true. Yeah, it's so true. I know I'm stretching. I have my own stretching routine and workout routine. And, and, you know, as I've gotten older, I've got stove up. So I have to like do it just for physical therapy to keep me yes. keep feeling good. And, um, okay. So, so yeah. Okay. Supplements. Um, one point for every multivitamin probiotic or beneficial sub supplement taken each day. Okay. So you get a max of three points for per day. So if you take seven, seven supplements, you still only get three points. Okay. So it's like, I might take a probiotic and, you know, something for my, my immune system right now and a D3 or something. Um, you know, if you need help finding what supplements are right for you, Coming to the store, you know, one of the things, you know, not everybody needs to necessarily start in the same place with supplements. There are certain things I would recommend to everybody, but the thing is maybe let's focus on the things that are best for you right now. So come on in, tell us, tell us maybe what health issue you're having or what, um, where you're at and what you would like to improve and we can find the, help you find the right thing for you to start with. Okay. Um, sunshine and fresh air are so important. Um, plus one point for every 20 minutes of sunshine and fresh air, max three points a day. So if you get an hour and you're outside in the fresh air, whether it's sunshiny or not, um, as long as you're outside, you get three points per day. That's the max. Okay. Um, Nicole's dogs just went running. Yeah. <laughs> he saw a bird, I think. <laughs> so, okay. Now, um, rest and recharge. So every day, one point for every 20 minutes of everything that is restful and or recharges you. Max is two points a day. So if you do 40 minutes of that, that's two points. That's the most you can get for that, okay? That's anything. Um, for me, you know, it might be golfing, might be spending time with my family or watching a show in the evening, um, whatever that is for you. Um, here's something to keep in mind. Like, there's so some things I do that I get lots of points for. Like, for instance, if I go golfing, I'm going to get my exercise points because I walk. I'm going to get my sunshine, fresh air points because I'm outside. I'm going to get my rest and recharge points. Um, I might even get um, I might even get some spiritual points for that or some learning points, because sometimes when I do that, I'm listening to an audio book. <laughs> I do that. OK, so there are certain things we can do where we're really getting really getting a lot of points. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be, all these don't have to be separate. Um, they can kind of go be symbiotic. Together, yeah. Okay, so so spiritual helps, uh, spiritual health. Um, you know, this is different for everybody. For me, that's, um, I spend time every morning in my Bible and in prayer. Um, that's actually something I'm, well, I've been working on even since the last challenge of being consistent every day. I don't always do it every day. So I'm, that's my personal goal is to be really consistent in that. Um, so whatever that is for you is totally fine. Um, so I have plus two points for per day for prayer, devotion, or meditation um, or time in nature. And then also two points for other focused act or service work. So max four points a day. So the service thing, you know, that, that could just be sending an encouraging text to a friend, giving a friend a phone call. You know, right now with the COVID going on, maybe a FaceTime call, a video call, or, you know, driving to somebody's house and honking the horn and telling them to come out and say hi from a distance. Um, yeah, you, great ideas. Anything other focused, you know, whether that's, you know, going and buying somebody's groceries or, you know, the big things like, um, you know, paying somebody's electric bill or um, going out and helping them get some firewood or whatever chores they might need help with. Um, so I think one really important part of health is being outward focused and not focusing on ourselves. It's about serving other people and thinking of other people's needs, um, is really healing for us too. Yes. Agreed. 
Okay, so um, learning plus one point for every 20 minutes of self-improvement tasks like reading, educational videos, audiobooks, training exercises. Okay, so, um, you know, I try to do something, some kind of reading. I do a lot of audible, which is uh, listening to books. Um, so if I did 40 minutes of that, I could get two points a day for that. So also you could double up your points here on your bonus book and movie points. So if you watch one of those hour long movies, you would get your two points for learning and you would get your five points for a movie that day. Okay. Um, so it's plus, so, so let me know if you have any questions on the learning. That's pretty much anything you're doing. If you're watching a cooking show, if you're watching a DIY show, something that, you know, is sharpening the saw and helping you improve. Okay. So the bonus book or movie, um, there, I'm going to send out that list again, like I said, um, five points per movie, 15 points per book, and you get 50 points max for the entire challenge. So the, the last time we did this challenge, you handed those in all at the end. You turn those points in all at the end of the challenge. This time you just record them on the days you do them in the challenge. Okay. Um, and then personal goal. So we added this. This was actually Jess. Mooney's idea. She works here at the store as system manager. She thought it'd be good to have a place to write our own personal thing in here. So I know for some people they were doing like a fat intermittent fasting. Um, some people were, um, we heard a couple people's goals. Um, you heard mine, Nicole, what did you say yours was? The cheese. My goals, cheese and to meditate for a minimum of three minutes a day. So your personal, so um, personal goal, here would be for the meditate because that's the positive one for Nicole. So she would get her five points for that if she does that in the day, but she would also get her spiritual health points for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So also if you don't have a personal one or if your personal one is like nutrition or your personal one is water or sleep or exercise, you can just put that in this personal goal slot and get an extra five points every day that you'd meet that goal. In addition to the points already up higher in the list. Okay. Okay, bad points, or yeah, I think somebody had comments, bad, uh, unhealthy habit points. Yeah, I should change that, you're right. So um, unhealthy habit minus points, okay, junk food. So minus two points each time you eat any foods with refined flour, refined sugar, added sugar, added oil, added fat, heavily processed food, fast food, fried foods, inorganic food, and or GMO food or alcohol. Okay, so, um, you know, maybe some, maybe some of you are at a place where you're going to do all of that um, all the way. Maybe some of you are like, not, you know, you're not gonna, you're like, I'm gonna pick one of those things or something, okay? You, the goal here isn't perfection, it's progress, okay? So if you're just gonna try to cut out added sugar, that's fine, focus on that. The other thing to keep in mind here is say I have one of those things, say I have one of those things for breakfast, one of those things for lunch and two of them for dinner, I get minus eight points for the day. Okay, but if I have 10 of those things for lunch and 10 of them for dinner, I can still only miss eight points. So there's a maximum you can subtract there. But okay. don't eat 10 of those things for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, this can be adapted to where you are. You know, I would encourage everybody to do it fully, but I, it's also meant to be adapted to where you are. Okay, stress and anxiety are so damaging to our immune system and our overall health. So minus four points for stress and or anxiety that takes over half your day and minus eight points for stress and or anxiety that takes over your whole day, okay? You gotta be honest with yourself here, max eight, eight points per day. We're gonna have to be aware there's days where I get so stressed out that my whole day is crappy. Um, there's days where I get over it halfway through the day and recover and, and right the ship, okay? But being aware of this and learning to um, get in a place where we can, you know, recognize that and, and set it right um, is really important because stress can really take us downhill in a hurry. They say that 90, I think it's 90% of disease or maybe it's 75% of disease originates in the mind. Okay. So our, we have so many thoughts. We have like I think it's 60,000 thoughts per day or somewhere between 20 and 60,000 thoughts per day. And the majority of those are negative thoughts. So imagine if we can just change, you know, even if we could just get to where half of our thoughts are positive, we're going to be cooking, 
We're going to be flying. We're going to be helping people. We're going to be making positive impact all around the world. Okay. In our little community and our families. Okay. You can do it. Okay. TV and devices. TV and devices. I said it. Minus two points for every hour over two hours. So if I get three, if I watch a movie for three hours, I get minus two points. Two hours of screen time recreational. This isn't counting at work. This is just recreational. So if I go home at night and I watch three hours, I get minus two points for that extra hour over my two hour limit. If I do four hours, then I get minus eight points. But the most I can minus is eight points. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I get four points. So most I can minus is four points. Okay. Sitting minus two points for every hour of sitting at work with no walking or standing interval in between. So if you just sit at work for a whole hour and 15 minutes and you don't get up during, you know, you don't get up at that hour, that's minus two points. Okay. Unless it's educational. I got a text about educational. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're sitting, but you can still, even if it's educational, Oh, you're talking about TV. Yeah, if Jess had texted me about educational, I think she's talking about TV. <laughs> well, and it, it's at work too. Yeah, she's talking about the TV. So yeah, if it's educational, um, but that's gonna, yeah, we'll have to talk about that, Jess, because I'm not, I'm not figuring it out of my brain. Okay, but yeah. Um, still, even if you're, whatever you're doing, try to get up, especially at work, get up and move every hour. Okay. Personal goal here. So Nicole said hers is cheese. Um, some of your goals might be a personal goal that you, you know, it's between you and you and yourself or you and God or whatever you want to do there. Um, or it can be one of these habits that are already listed here. You can, you can get, so let's say my, my, I want to really, I, I think Jess had talked about Coke. She really wanted to be like, Coke is done. And so she's probably going to put it here. And that way, when she does it, she's going to get extra penalized for it. And that way it's extra motiv motivating for her to not do it. Okay. Or for Nicole, it might be cheese here. So she's going to be ex extra penalized for cheese. So it's going to be motivating for her to not do it for 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what else, Nicole, am I missing? I think that we pretty much covered it all. Somebody was asking about oils, though, and uh, I had said that the avocado, coconut, olive is okay. Salad dressing is okay, but a lot of salad dressings have, like, canola oil or safflower. Those are not good oils. Try to avoid those ones. So if you're going to have salad dressing, just make sure it's got olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil. Those are good ones. Um, yeah. Will you make a list? We had one from last challenge that I might still have. Why don't you make a list of approved oils? Email yeah. it to me. I will compare it to the one I have, and then we'll publish it to the group. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's definitely oils that are healthy, healthier than others. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Okay. No fried things, those oily things, you know. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We'll have to give up those fried donuts at home. <laughs> no, just kidding. I think cheese might be one of mine too. That's one of them. We had got rid of it and then it got crept back in. Yeah, well, Kenny and Kennedy eat it, and we buy organic cheese, but still, it's like, I just know that I perform better without it, and I do feel better without it, but it is addictingly good sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This was so much fun. Um, this challenge is going to, you know, we really loved it last time, and we're really looking forward to doing this with you again. Um, and all you newcomers, welcome for the first time. We're so glad to have you doing this with us. And, you know, just remember health is the greatest wealth. So let's invest in our health together because we're all worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And small habits lead to big change. Let's do this. Go challengers.
Bye you. And remember, if you have questions, please leave them on the Facebook group and one of us will, or most of us will answer them. And, um, you know, you feel free to reach out to any one of us um, in private message as well, if you want to. So. Absolutely. Thanks so much. See you guys. Thanks guys. Have a great night. Bye.